Hey guys, welcome to Chats with Krita. Now, I just want to first of all apologise that um, I haven't posted anything in three days. I did do my chat show on Tuesday, I think. Yeah, so I actually filmed it Tuesday. But I got really busy and forgot to edit it on Tuesday because on Wednesday, I was meant to work 9 to 1, but I worked 10 to 5 and then I had dinner on, and I was probably a little too drunk yesterday to actually upload. So I am a few days later, which I do apologise for, um, and my chat show this evening is a little different to the topic that I did do on Tuesday, but I will redo my topic on Tuesday on Saturday, which we're now back to normal because we did have a formal dinner the other day. So I'm going to do a quick um, Chats with Krista episode. So this one is about um, Vietnam. So last year um, in November, I went to Vietnam, Cambodia with my sister. And I really enjoyed it. It was a really great place to go, so I would recommend people to go. Um, they have great folk. And a really interesting thing that, you know, I learned so many interesting things when I went to Vietnam. It was my first um, Asian country I went to. So it was really, it was really great. It was a really good experience because I've, you know, been to so many other countries. I've just never been to an actual Asian country. So that was pretty exciting. Um, so an interesting thing that I learned there was when you, so obviously they have their roads, but it's really interesting because, first of all, when... We, like, beep our horn, you know, we're usually angry at someone, so we usually will beep our horn and flip them off. I don't know there, if they, like, well, I'm trying to figure out where their word is. If they flip their horn over there, it literally means that they're coming. Like, they're, you know, either next to you and they're coming up beside you or they're behind you, about to approach you. So that's what that means, like, they don't beep at each other to flip them off and it's actually really interesting because you constantly just hear like all these like dipping of horns going on as these people drive past and you hear motorbike horns, truck horns, car horns, everything and the traffic is insane like we're like, like you know we would have a you know be in the car that we were going in and there would be like that much difference between myself and the next vehicle. Now another interesting thing is Obviously, when they drive, because well, the majority of them have motorbikes because over there cars are quite expensive. Even second-hand cars are quite expensive. So most of them drive motorbikes. Now, in Australia and most of the world, usually two people can, are uh, like, it's, you know, the law that only two people can actually be on a motorcycle. I don't know that over there, I saw six people on a motorbike. Like, it was a normal motorbike, like, not like a, you know, Transformers looking motorbike. It was a normal motorbike with six people on it. Some of them are little kids and they're just kind of like standing up on like the, like where you put like your, like your rest your feet on the bike. Literally, they were standing on there. So I thought that was really interesting. And they didn't wear helmets. Um, another interesting thing was... Over there, it's, it's quite intriguing, like over there when we would be walking, we'd literally be walking on the road because on the footpath there would be like all the motorbikes parked. So you know, you'd have your footpath or pavement as some people like to call it, as Americans like to call it. So the footpath slash pavement would have all these motorbikes on it. So they'd have their motorbikes just parked on the pavement. And so you'd have to literally walk on the road. Now, I will, at another point, go into details into Vietnam, Cambodia trip a bit later on in another episode of my chat show. But this one's more of just a fun fact. I just wanted to quickly tell you that because I thought that was quite interesting. So, I think the fun fact is that um, the flag consists of a gold star. So, the Vietnamese flag is red and obviously this gold star. Now the five points of the star, so one represents farmers, one represents workers, one represents intel, uh, 
intellectuals, one represents youth, and one represents soldiers. So the five points represent that. But the red represents the bloodshed during, you know, during the wars. So it is pretty interesting that, you know, all the stars kind of represent the different, you know, people that are within the country. So, you know, you've got your farmers, your workers, your intellectuals, your youth, and your soldiers. So each one would represent a certain person, and then the red would represent... So I feel like the star kind of represents the achievements now, or like the society now, and the red represents, obviously, the bloodshed during the war. So it's kind of showing like their transition and how history has affected them, but has also changed, <clears throat> has changed them as well. That's what I interpret the flag to be. But honestly, I would definitely recommend people to go to Vietnam. It is amazing. I enjoyed it. It was really hot when we went over there, so be sure to, you know, to drink lots of bottled water. It's fantastic. But as I did say, I will eventually do an actual chat show about Vietnam. I have had quite a few people tell me to do some about Vietnam. Now, I'm just reading some of these fun facts because some of them are really, really, really interesting. As if I should have, I should have looked these up before I went to Vietnam because there's so many that I could have just been like, this is this. Okay, so, the country's name was originally spelled as two words. So, Vietnam, so it would have been Viet and Nam. Now, just off topic quickly, I met one of the, um, because we went on this, okay, so we went on this cruise in Halong Bay, and one of the people who, like, the workers on the actual cruise was Vietnam, Nam Viet. So it was, like, basically, like, Vietnam, but the other way, Nam Viet. And I thought that was really interesting, like, the fact that he's kind of named after the country, but kind of not named after the country. And there's actually quite a few people who have, like, the name Viet. Obviously, even though they're pronounced differently, um, but we pronounce it as Viet. It's the same with, we have, um, oh, it's this one kind of name that majority of the population are named after. But I can't think what it's called. I'm going to ask my sister. So another interesting thing is lizard fishing is one of the most popular Vietnam hobbies. And also the most widespread hobby. I don't think I saw anyone going lizard fishing. I don't really know what lizard fishing is. So I wouldn't know if they've gone lizard fishing or not. So, I noticed this probably not when we were in Vietnam, but more when we were in Cambodia. Um, that elephant rides are a very popular local activity, often enjoyed by tourists. Me and my sister didn't do that because obviously we just don't like that. Obviously, because animals should be free to do what they want and shouldn't have to do things like that. That's my opinion. Um, so when we were over there, we also saw the tunnel, the Coochie Tunnels, which is really fascinating, and I would definitely recommend people to go. So this was like the, the tunnels that we used during the Vietnam War, and I think a few other wars as well. Not quite sure, but definitely in the Vietnam War. So the interesting thing is when you look up, there's like this little thing, and I can't think how big it was, but my sister like fit it into it and you, you go into it and you literally have like so there's like a like a thing that goes over your head so you're literally in this like little tunnel thing this little like hole in the ground basically with like this thing on your head and it's got like leaves all on it because during the Vietnam War all those um soldiers who fought for Vietnam would hide in these little um holes in the ground I can't remember what they're called but, like, these little holes in the ground. And they would fit in there and be able to put the thing right down. Now, oh, my sister said that when she was in there, she kind of had to, like, pull her knees kind of up to, like, near her chest. Because that's the thing. Vietnamese, um, 
very nice people are not as tall as Australians and Americans. So obviously they would all fit, but a lot of, you know, people from Western countries would have trouble fitting in there. And that's an interesting fact is that the original, they still have the original Gucci tunnels, but then they've also got some that they've made bigger to allow Western... No, I read this on an article somewhere. They made them bigger to allow Western tourists to be able to go see it and go into them. I went into them and I did not like it. I was like, we went to like the two meter mark and it seemed like it was forever. So, um, for those who don't know, the Cooch tunnels are an underground, so a network, like an underground network of, tu obviously of tunnels. So it was used as a military base for the Viet Cong. Um, so used for a military, yeah, for the Viet Cong, um, in their resistance for American soldiers. Now it's also interesting when you go there, they show you the various kind, like they didn't just have guns and that, but they kind of used, re like, resources from the land. So, you may use, like, recyclable, um, like, gun bullets and shells and they used, like, these things where I can't quite explain it until you go there. But, they have, like, these, obviously, because they did guerrilla warfare back then. So, they have, like, a bit of grass you'd think was grass. And if you trod on it, it would, like, flip over and you'd fall into this thing and get killed by all these spikes. It's just, like, it was fascinating to think that they could, like, that they had created this. And that it was used during the Vietnam War. So, an inter another interesting fact is that football is the most common sport in Vietnam. As I said, I didn't see people playing football, but that's because I was on a holiday and didn't really see this. Here's, actually, here's an interesting one. The country has a literacy level of 94%. That's pretty good. Um, so school children are summoned by traditional gongs instead of bells. Now, I knew that because when my sister and I went to a small, a few small villages, um, so we had Sapa, which is indeed a, kind of a small village, but when we went to even smaller villages, we actually got to see children um, in like a Vietnamese school, and she was explaining the whole concept of like the gong and how children, you know, are summoned to go to school. And it was, yeah, it was just interesting kind of seeing how, the, you know, their school compared to to all the schools here in Australia. So it's really interesting to see, and obviously their, um, their schooling system is going to be a lot different to ours as well. Their classrooms were a lot, a lot different as well. And there's, you know, it, that's how it is. Now, oh, I just found out the popular, the most common name in the country is Nagai, Nagai, now bear with me because I don't think that's how you actually pronounce it, but it's called Nagai, so it's N-G-U-Y-E-N, -E that was a very common name, so it's either a very common first name or a very common last name, it depends really on the family, because some people would have it as a surname, some people would have it as a last name, and that does the thing as well, not just, like, like, the names of people who live there, but also names of businesses as well, I saw quite a lot of I'm just going to say Nagayan, so I'm sorry if that's not right. I don't know how you actually pronounce it, but... Oh, and I'm uh, just looking up some more interesting facts. Ah, this is probably a really, really big one. Like a really big fact. And so, all, like, America, Australia, and... And you know the United Kingdom and a lot of other countries refer to it as the Vietnam War. But I noticed that when we went over there, they refer to it as the American War, which is really interesting because they know that we call it the Vietnam War, but I didn't know that they call it. Like I just always thought it was called you know Vietnam War, you know. But over there they actually call it the American War, which I thought was quite fascinating. Because obviously America had a really big influence on the war at that time. So that's why they called it the American War. And over here we call it Vietnam War. So I thought that was interesting. I've never actually known that they called it the, the Vietnam War. 
So the last two points is obviously um, the geographical side to it, if you want to get to that. So the capital city is Hanoi. Hanoi is beautiful. I love Hanoi. This is so, like, everyone knows it's so friendly. Uh, the, the hotel was said it was ama like, it was amazing. And the staff was so friendly. Because when I was there, we had, um, obviously because I'm a diabetic, a lot of my insulin supplies have to be in a fridge. And the fridge wasn't cold enough, so we asked the people at reception if they could put it into, like, the little kitchen, um, like, fridge. And they were more than happy to do so, which I thought was very nice of them. So, obviously, the official language is Vietnamese. The largest city is Ho Chi Minh City. Um, oh, oh, no, that's, that's Cambodia. Never mind. I just thought of a really interesting point, but it's to do with um, Cambodia. So, the, so, there's a lot of religions in Vietnam. So, the most popular is Buddhism which is 7.9% of the population, Catholic is 6.6% of the population, Muslim is 0.1%, and the biggest one is those who don't actually have a religion, which is 81.8%. The average life expectancy is 73.41 years old, which is pretty good. Um, natural resources include phosphates, coal, rare earth elements, things like that. So they have, they have a lot of agricultural land. And I will tell you a little funny story of agricultural land in my next video that I eventually do on Vietnam. And they have 45 airports. But that ends my show today because I don't want to go over time. Uh, I know this one wasn't as good as my other catcher videos, but as I did say, um, and most of the time I have had a very busy week. I have to finish off my assignment, and I'm so exhausted because I had to work. Sometimes I hope you all have a fantastic evening. Enjoy it, and I shall see you all if all goes well, and if I get all my sums done on Saturday. Bye.